this constantly various uh, places in the ocean, big masses of water are being lifted up and then lowered again. So every time potential energy is being created. Now how would you tap into that? And how much ma uh, energy really is stored in this? Higher power density can normally be found in deeper water. So we go so 50 meters or deeper. We're generally better off. So there's one thing to remember. So if you really want to tap into the waves, you go offshore quite a while. And the other thing to remember is that waves are very seasonal. Right now we're here. Um, ocean energy is on this picture. It is somewhere in one of those lines because at the moment we're creating 10 megawatts out of a global um, energy production of 2.1 terawatts. So if you look at the percentages, that is, there's a lot of zeros there. The estimates for North America are that we could get about 7% of our consumption from wave energy alone in the not so uh, uh, long future. So one type of advice is what is called an attenuator device, and the Palama sea snake is the big example. This is also the first commercial um, wave energy system out there. It looks like a sea snake. It's, it's a big thing, about three and a half meter diameter. I saw it in, in Orkney. Big thing, um, several sections, and in between the sections are joints, and the waves push these joints up and down. And in the joints, there's hydraulics. And as it being, is being pushed up and down, fluid is passing through, going through hydraulic motor, and that drives the generator. So I think one of the pros is certainly that these wave devices are very widely employable. You can go offshore. You can put it basically anywhere. If you have point absorbers, you can put them scattered around uh, offshore, out of sight. Um, there's reasonable scalability. You can make farms of point absorbers or so Palamas farms just by adding lots of devices to a local grid. Now, what about the negatives? It's not as predictable as tidal, and it is seasonal. But this is one of the main things. The wave fields that are out there are very chaotic. And that means that as an energy device, you cannot just use a design wave on which to optimize your device. It has to work well for an enormous variety of waves out there. And the other thing is, of course, that since they're often in remote areas, you have very high infrastructure costs, right? You're putting a grid down there, putting cables underneath the seafloor to a land-based um, uh, uh, infrastructure. Environmental impact is really uh, still uncertain. If you had a whole wave farm of Palamas, no, people don't really know what will happen to local currents. If you extract the energy, does it have an effect? On, on the local environment, don't really know. If you had a device like this that works on waves that vary all the time, so the power density fluctuates all the time, then integrating that into a network, a power network, that's an electricity network, that's not simple.